um, and you can pull out a 12 by 12 base piece of paper. I have chosen to work on black. And then you can take your four photo mats and or four photos all cut into three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch squares. So that's 3.25 inches by 3.25 inches. There is one, two, three, four of those. And then I had told you to cut four squares out of one pattern paper and four squares out of a second pattern paper that were also 3.25 inches by 3.25 inches. And now that we're here, you can see that those squares have been cut in half again. Um, so if you wanna take each of those squares, that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. So if this was my square, you're gonna take it corner to corner and cut them all in half. So not lengthways or width ways, but from corner to corner to give you eight of these triangles. And you'll do the same thing with both patterns. So once you have done that, I'll give everybody a minute. So I'll just recap one more time um, for anyone watching, or maybe if you're watching the replay, um, there was four, and that's what's in the corner, either photo mats or photos at three and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. And then we needed four squares of pattern paper in one pattern that were cut to three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch. And then two squares in a second pattern that were cut into oh, three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch squares. And then we're going to take those squares that we had and cut them in half. So the two squares become four triangles and the four squares become eight triangles. Once we have done that, that it was the trickiest part of this whole layout. Um, it's a very simple but very nice and very versatile and usable and reproducible um, page. Is that enough descriptive words for you? Holy smoke, Chantal. Um, so once you've done that, I found the easiest place to start in terms of spacing wise was to glue my four corner pieces on. Let me see if I can measure this so I can tell you about how much. I left about an, is that an eighth? Yeah, an eighth of an inch from the edge of my 12 by 12 paper to the edge of this photo mat and or photo. So there's an eighth of an inch gap around the whole outer edge of this layout. So all the way around, it's an eighth of an inch of your background paper showing um, around your pattern papers and photos. So again, step one will be to take your four photo mats and or four photos and glue them onto the four corners of your 12 by 12 page, leaving an eighth of an inch on the outside edge. The glare is not great, but there's about an eighth of an inch there between the edge of your square and the edge of your paper. Once you have done that, it will just be a game of filling in. Also, actually, I should note, I personally, especially working on black paper, I really like the look of the inked edges, like the distressed edges. Um, sometimes on white, I like a cleaner finish, but you can see the difference, I think, maybe between the edge that's... I'll hold it up to the camera in a second. You can see how that's been inked, how that edge has been inked there. And so it gives that nice black soft finish to the edge. So to do that, I just take my black ink. And for this technique, I prefer the foam. I know, remember yesterday we talked about different types of blending tools. Um, I like the blending brushes for, you know, over top of a 
stencil maybe or when you want to carry it in it gives a nice soft edge but for just at inking the edges of a paper to give it a nice finish I like the foam and just dip it into your ink pad and rub it along the edge of your paper and I'll show you I'll hold it up so you can see the difference between the two in case that's not something you're familiar with um, the difference between an inked edge and a not inked edge. So you can see this side I added the ink and the finish that that gives versus this side that has not been inked and the finish that that gives. So sometimes it's just nice to have that sort of extra element. And again, especially on black paper, I just feel like it sort of ties it all together because um, it sort of helps that paper just fade into one another it sort of softens the edges i just really like it so if you would like to do that you can go ahead and ink the edges of all of those triangles that you've cut and then it will just be a matter of gluing them all in place so for me once i had glued all four of the corners just pick one of the side the spots to start in it doesn't matter which of the four spots you fill first they're all exactly the same and i started with this triangle and I flushed it up so that it was ran straight with this one. But you do, it's not flush along the bottom. You can see this red paper is going to be flush along the bottom. It's going to be an eighth of an inch up from your edge. But this one needs to go up a little bit more than that. You can lay them down first and, and sort of get a gauge for um, placement if you are struggling or unsure. Um, for me, I used, again, I did not use score tape. Karen's hack would have worked, but I don't have a glue stick with me. So I just use an easy runner, stuck them down sort of as best as I could, and then um, shifted them as necessary because with an easy runner, I just made this, you know, like a little bit ago. You can lift it up and replace it if it's off a little bit. Um, so I enjoy working with an easy runner when I'm not a hundred percent confident in where something is going to go. So line it up to the best of your ability. Um, and then once you've set them down, then you can sort of use that as a gauge for, okay, maybe I have to shift this piece down a little bit, this one left a little bit, whatever it might be. Um, another nice piece of information to help you lining them all up. So one I mentioned that this red one is going to be an eighth of an inch up from the bottom, just like these two squares were. Um, and this piece here, the top is going to be flush in line with the top of that photo square. So that's another reference point that helps you sort of start the base of this little geometric mess that you have to perfectly fit into this little quadrant. And if anyone has any questions at any point, feel free to let me know. Um, but those are just sort of some tips and tricks that helped me to get those glued into place. And once you've done one, you kind of understand what you're doing and get a feel for um, how they line up. And then, yeah, once you've sorted that out, you spin and do it again three more times. And then you have this super cute um, layout. The center can be for another photo, it can be for your journaling, or you could leave it blank, like it almost looks like a photo, uh, like a camera shutter, I think, kind of reminds me of that, or a flower maybe, 